Hey everyone, how's it going? Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. So, as you have read from the title, um, it's going to be a video discussing how you can avoid getting your items from overseas, not seized by customs. So, pretty much this is exactly what it sounds like. How to avoid customs seizure, how to avoid any issues with customs regarding anything coming overseas. Um, if you are just kind of clicking on this, you know, just into the blue, basically what I do is I do a lot of different types of airsoft videos and of course with a lot of my airsoft products I order from overseas. I am in the United States, so with the custom laws they're a little bit more strict. So um, just looking at my past videos and past comments that you guys have left for me regarding just worries about customs. Would it be you know, safe to order from an overseas you know, retailer? Um, number one would be the company that I order from a lot for my airsoft guns and any airsoft products would be airsoftglobal.com. I've also ordered from ehobbyasia.com. There's also, um, I think, jkpanda.com that's out there. There's a ton of different um, international retailers that kind of have the US customers a little bit worried what I, you know is it safe to order from these um, particular vendors you know will my package get seized and so on so I will go ahead and talk to you guys a little bit more um, just kind of explaining that so hope you guys enjoy the video so in front of me today I have a fully trademarked Glock 17 airsoft replica so of course with this it needs to be ordered pretty much overseas to get any type of realistic trademark like this um, on a Glock pistol. So here's the main reason why Glock is so kind of screwy in a sense in terms of the airsoft just world. There is, you know, just to sum this up short, I have other videos explaining this. There is a lawsuit with Glock and Airsoft companies making Glock replicas. Glock is basically saying, no, don't make our pistols into Airsoft replicas. We don't want anything to do with Airsoft. That's it. You know, plain and simple. But of course, a lot of retailers and manufacturers like WeTech would be one, for example. They still continue to churn out models from China or Hong Kong. Um, wherever they make these and it's you know it's still flooding the market but in a sense they order it from overseas and they come into the US because in the US as of now there really isn't any airsoft retailer that will have that pistol so they kind of outlawed it in a sense because of the whole trademark and the whole legal issue involved with Glock you know that's the thing so this particular pistol has become a hot commodity um, because of the rarity of it for US customers, not saying for European or Asian, you know, everybody else towards that area of the world has easy access. You know, it's plain and simple. You can go to your local retailer in Europe or wherever you live over there and you'll be able to find one. More than likely in the US, it's a little different. So that resorts to us having to order overseas and taking that extra risk with. A trademarked item that's technically illegally trademarked because there is no um, patent for airsoft replicas that are approved by the actual Glock manufacturer so kind of gets a little screwy um, and worries a lot of people with should I order you know from airsoft global should I order from eHobby Asia whatever um, so I will kind of talk to you um, reasons why something would get seized. I just did some brief research because I kind of, you know, have an idea of how things can work. You know, I work for a logistics company and in a sense I kind of understand certain procedures that go with items going over the border. So, you know, whether it's something going to Mexico or to Canada um, or overseas on the barge or via airplane, whatever. Um, everything has its own way and special procedure of getting it shipped. So the main reason uh, for something to get stopped at customs is if the packaging itself first off is some kind of damage or some kind of just, you know, oddity to it. Something that kind of throws the, the person sifting through the pile there off a little bit. 
um, you know, then it kind of starts gathering some attention. Um, usually they tend to go after items that are illegally trademarked is what I uh, just did some research on. So from what I understand, the meaning of that is it's like something that came from China that has the trademark and logo and everything stamped on it, marked on the product without any form of, you know, agreement on that company, like that consent of that company coming through and, you know, whatever, like, I'm trying to word this as best as I can, but pretty much illegal logos with no approval of the main main person that owns that logo, um, you know, they'll be able to see that. Um, if, for example, the packaging itself has that particular logo on there and it's obviously Chinese, they'll kind of pay more attention to it and be like, huh, that seems a little bit odd. And they actually do have the ability to cut open your package to do just a quick examination of the contents and then close it back up. Um, they'll usually reseal it with a certain tape that'll say uh, check by customs, which uh, I've had other products, not necessarily airsoft related, but I've had products like that um, that would come back to me that you know had that tape that it was checked by customs, you know, whatever, no big deal for me. Um, but for a lot of you, it's a huge deal because you're kind of not sure. Um, there's again many ways to kind of bypass this which i'll touch into a little bit more um, what you'll receive in the case of a seizure for your package um, they'll basically send you a letter um, what i understand is it'll just say you know we've confiscated your package for so and so reason um, it's almost like you have the letter and then they send you another one you can reply to the letter or you can ignore it the thing with this is if you reply to it, you're kind of held accountable for ordering a counterfeit product and it might affect you because then they're going to be like, well, you ordered this particular product and it's not exactly legal because it's basically a faked item. It's using trademarks and logos that belong to another company that did not approve this particular item. It's not their brand. On the other hand, if you ignore the letter and just never get back to them with anything, um, they'll usually hold it at their facility for about a month or so, 30 days, and then from there they'll just field destroy it. They'll burn it in a, in a kiln or they'll do something with it. They'll probably keep it and sell it. I don't know. I mainly hear that they just destroy these things. You'll never see them again. So there are ways that these certain retailers kind of get around this. Um, because typically the hotspot areas that um, are a little worrisome for packages are for Los Angeles, for New York, Chicago, and I think Miami and Texas. Um, those are kind of like the main hubs, like some of the largest airports in the world, you know, that these packages need to go through and get searched. They're more the hot zones. Um, I myself am within one of those hot zones. Um, again, I've had plenty of success with getting packages delivered to me, but you know, not everybody can be so lucky. Here's the ways to get around this. You, depending on which website you order, you can double check to see what their shipping FAQs are. So a lot of international websites will have this. Um, for example, Airsoft Global actually does. They have special handling section where if you click on that, they actually have about maybe 12 or 15 different um, methods you can select regarding, you know, if, for example, you're ordering a Glock replica airsoft pistol, you can have it ship in two packages, like two segments. They will literally just break the pistol in half. There's a bag in here, it would help if I took that out. In two parts like this, ship this in one, ship this in the other, which actually the best part of this is they won't put any orange tip on it. They won't spray paint it or put anything because it is not a complete gun since it's in two separate packages. So that is a perk to this, except for this particular website, they do charge a small fee, about $25 to pretty much do the service. So in the end, you're paying for the product, the shipping, and then that extra special handling. Um, that's an option for if you're very worrisome and you kind of, you're, you're in those hot zones and you're not sure of what's gonna happen if you're first time, you know, first time ordering, um, I would recommend this option. I definitely did when I ordered from eHobby Asia. I pretty much made sure that they covered every little bit of the gun. They shipped it, you know, however way possible to just minimize the seizure of the package itself. Um, 
So that's an option. Um, there also is another option when you check out. So just you pick your, you know, your product, you check it out, you go through all the steps. There will be a box that will say special instructions. So typically any website you order will have this option. It's like a box, you could type in whatever you want. You can say, you know, just have this wrapped a special way or you can, you know, you can kind of put something in there. They will kind of accommodate that and proceed forward. So you can put in there just for them to double check because they'll be able to see it when they print the manifest with your item on there. Um, you can have them make sure that they cover all logos make sure orange tips are where they need to be since if it's coming to the US um, and you know just minimize risk of custom seizure you can put that in there in caps if you want they'll do it on their end typically when you buy these Glock replicas what they will do automatically you don't even need to tell them to do this they'll do it because they know the strict laws of these pistols and the US so they already know they already have a special procedure to do so they will cover all of this with electrical tape, any little marking that would have any Glock anything on there, they would cover those up with electrical tape. So again, it's not showing trademarks, it's pretty much blank. So they can't really, they have no reason to confiscate anything because it's just a blank slate, no logos are being used, that's it. Um, another thing to note as well is, um, so another thing they'll typically like to do on the outside of the package when you have the main label with your address on the bottom for the item description, they like to get a little creative sometimes. For example, if you've seen my previous unboxing video of Airsoft Global Glocks, um, you'll see that in the description they will actually write like toy car parts or like Legos or puzzle pieces something to just throw people off throw the customs agents off completely from what's inside the box and then once they read that they could just turn a blind eye throw it on the conveyor and bam it's going to be on the usps truck to your door in a week or, or a couple days whatever um, they like to do that um, also what they like to do and i really like this that so they go kind of above and beyond to really make sure nothing happens with you know a seizure um, is they like to fold all their boxes inside out so typically any airsoft gun um, will have a nice box it will have you know beautiful like imagery of it and everything um, they will tend to fold that in so you just see the brown it's brown all around and you know there's no indication of any kind of pistol or anything on there um, they also like to do that um, to make sure that nothing gets seized and one last thing I'd like to add is for making an international purchase, and I 100% think that you need to do this because if you don't, it'll just cause you issues in case anything does happen. Use PayPal as the just specific payment method. I, there's multiple reasons for this because PayPal, again, is very secure. It's a very great company. I use them all the time when I make any purchases international. This should be for anything international you buy, use PayPal because they will save you just in case if something happens and your money is on the line because you didn't get the product, you didn't get your money back. They will go out to um, that company you ordered from and they will get your money back. And you know, it's called filing a dispute, um, which you know, hopefully you won't have to deal with something like that. But again, if you do, they will help you, they'll take care of you, they'll do their very best to get you your money back. Because sometimes with the money involved with these, including the shipping, it's very costly. Um, it is gonna be expensive to ship over to the US, so on top of the product and then the shipping, it adds up to a lot of money. So, you know, PayPal will definitely help secure your transaction, which is what you want, because it's an investment. You know, with an investment, there's always risk, but there always has to be a way to kind of save your ass, so to speak. Um, but that's really it that's kind of you know the it's 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 kind of simple in a sense to understand why they would do this you know it's for protection it's very understandable there's a lot of counterfeit products the u.s really doesn't want to deal with that kind of stuff anything foreign really they don't like period um they'll name every excuse in the book to just flag it as crap and burn it in the furnace or whatever um but this is mainly a video just explaining how you can avoid this in general and you know minimize the risk of getting anything 
um, seized by customs. In the end, 90% of the work is going to be on the uh, the vendor you're purchasing from. They're going to have to be the ones to really understand the U.S. laws and kind of how to bypass them a little bit just by doing these little things that I mentioned here and there. Um, but for the most part, that's everything I really wanted to share with you guys as this is a huge question I get on a lot of my videos lately with, you know, I don't want to get my stuff seized, you know, how do I get around it? This is basically the best way. Um, and if anything, reach out to the customer service on some of these places because they will literally tell you I've worked with a lot of them and they're very friendly, very informative, and it kind of makes me breathe a sigh of relief hearing, hearing these kind of things. So hopefully this is going to be your sigh of relief, you know, just to kind of rest easy about it. You know, don't worry so much about something will get seized. You just got to take these proper steps, you know, with any type of purchase, take your time. Don't rush it to get it done. Make sure you read the fine print, read everything. That's the important thing. But anyway, that's everything I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, definitely you know leave some comments below. Um, if you like the video, great. You know, smash the like button. Check out a lot of the other Glock videos I have. I do have a series playlist of just anything Glock related. So something you guys will definitely enjoy if you like this video. But anyway, that's it. Have a good day.